him he stood in the front of the locker room mirrors. Tears streaming down her face, making her makeup run slowly down her cheeks. With hands covering her eyes, she couldn't see herself in the mirror, but with the students' jeers and insults ringing in her head, she, she didn't want to. Freak! Loser! Ugly! God! Every time a label rose to the surface, her body trembled as she sobbed into her palms. Slut heart! Dumbass! As far as she cared the moment, she would be fine if she just died! Died that day! At least she wouldn't hear their voices anymore. But as the thoughts of suicide and escape began to seep into her mind, she heard the door open. Her heart stopped as she listened to the hinges creak, slowly bringing out another girl's entrance. Holding back the tears and sobs, Amy listened, barely lifting her head up to try and see the person in the mirror. But the only thing she saw was her ugly, weak, pathetic reflection. These thoughts, these thoughts got her deeply, slicing into her heart. But as they cut, they released her other of the emotion that she had held in for far too long. She couldn't even remember the last time. Rage. Anger began to course through her veins, warming her body, gradually burning away her pain and replacing it with this vile hate. And the more she stared into it, the black makeup smeared eyes, the more the anger filled her body. And the more her thoughts of suicide transformed into thoughts of homicide. Why kill herself when she could just kill them? As the new pleasant thoughts bubbled up from her soul, Amy began to hear something behind her. It was low, quiet, and distant. It was the sound of a happy girl, or a girl ready to leave for the day. This was laughter, but not laughter that you'd expect. This was cold, dark, and evil. And with it came fear and panic, sliding over her body and wrapping her and covering her with fear and pain that had previously enveloped her. Cold sweat broke out over her forehead dampening her brow as paralysis bound her legs. For this wasn't the laughter of a girl, but of a man. <laughs> then, just as the laughter had started terrifying her, it, it, it dissipated, fading into the air. The next sound Amy heard was the closing of the door and the deadbolt sliding into place. She was trapped! Just as immediate panic was starting to lift, leading her to run, all the lights in the room cut away, casting her into a dark abyss. One sound rang in that dark, cold room. The sound of heavy, rhythmic footsteps making their way across the room. To say that Amy was no longer angry would be the greatest lie ever told. The same way that telling her that she was no longer hurt would be pointless. She was still in pain from the curses of the other students. And her hate towards them was still burning in her veins, but both had been almost completely compressed by this state of fear and panic. Her heart was racing past any rate that any exercise could get it to, but all the energy she could have ever needed to get it there was now gone. Each step of the stranger's feet sucked her breath from her body, and the willingness to run was taken with it. Thoughts of death began to float back into her head. She was no longer thinking of suicide or homicide, but her own death. Images of her lifeless, bloody corpse tucked into some corner of the locker room seeped into her imagination, and she was downright terrified! Amy. A voice called for her. Amy jumped and screamed! For the voice did not come from in front of her but from behind her. Spinning around furiously, she could see nothing, nothing at all. Jesus Christ, 
Energy had found its way back to her legs. Her panic kept her from running. Instead, instead, she continued to turn, looking for the voice. Amy. It called to her again, still from behind her. The footsteps, the footsteps, they had stopped now, but so had she. Slowly, steadily, she turned around. Overhead, her light flashed on, illuminating herself, the sink, and the mirror. Amy, I'm right here. The voice, the voice that was quiet, small, and straight ahead of her. Blinking at the sudden swarm of light, Amy could make out just her own reflection. S something something was not right here. Above her head was a fo foggy fi figure. Her, her breath was caught in, caught in her throat as she saw what it really was. The intruder's face! His hair was black with red streaks, and over his face he wore a black mask that covered everything except his eyes. Bright yellow eyes stared back into hers making her feel open, exposed, and naked. Jesus! She wanted to scream, but nothing came out of her mouth. She couldn't dare to run, because if he was this close, she couldn't make it anywhere. She would just die, a tired, beaten old soul! Hello, Amy. Amy could now clearly hear his voice wasn't what she had been expecting. It was low, cold, and distant. It didn't sound like it belonged to a figure now standing in front of her. It sounded like his voice was to be deep and dark and menacing, and although it was true that his voice was indeed dark, it, it sounded more enticing and not threatening in the way she had thought. He, he sounded more intrigued with her than aiming to kill her as she had thought. However, that, that could not deter that something about his eyes had unnerved her. It was, it was, it was no way her color, the color, but, but she found that eerie at first, but there was something about them. That she, she just couldn't shake it. There was something she did not like. Like the way one would go outside and... No, just no. Something, something was... Something very terrible was about to happen to her. After a long, terrible silence. Amy spoke. Uh, who? Gulping down the last of her immediate fear. She finished. Who are you? The figure answered with a low, long breath of laughter. <laughs> it floated around her head, chilling her bones, slowly tightening around her heart like a serpent. Hmm, that is a good question, Amy. I promise to you that we'll explore that later. For now, at least tell me something. What can I do for you? His words were like silk, the way they just slid together, almost like a spell. What do you mean? The figure snickered at her. <laughs> I mean exactly what you're thinking. I can help you. If you'd like, I can help you get rid of them. Amy shivered. Somehow, he was reading her thoughts, and for that moment, the girl's jeers returned, along with the pain and hate that they'd caused. You don't need to run, Amy. I'm not here to hurt you. 
A long string of uneasiness slid down her spine at his words, no longer silky. But then, why are you here? Oh, Amy, 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 dear, dear Amy, please. She felt a hand slowly lay itself across her right shoulder. Jumping a little, she moved her eyes away from the two yellow ones in the mirror to look down. But to her surprise, nothing was there. I'm here for your revenge. <laughs> revenge. The word was said with such enthusiasm, like a little kid on the night of Christmas. Amy was speechless. In the mirror, the two eyes narrowed. If she didn't know any better, Amy would say that the figure was smiling behind that mask of his. What are you going to do? The figure's eyes widened a little. <laughs> Me? Oh, dear Amy. Amy noticed the feeling on her right shoulder drifting away as the smell of smoke suddenly filled her nose. She began to cough as she looked to the mirror and the figure was slowly dissipating, his features fading into a distant fog. I am nothing but a mere ghost. As she coughed, she thought she had heard the sound of falling metal. But it was too late, because as she turned around, the lights returned, and she was alone once again. However, her eyes noticed something on the floor. Not too far from where the figure had first appeared, standing next to her, carefully walking over. She bent over to examine the instrument, placing her hand on the handle of the large, wicked knife. She heard the figure's voice, but once more. The choice is only yours, Amy. Kill them or kill yourself. It is up to you. So you're sitting there and you're like, Hey man, that was a really good pasta. I wish I could read more pastas like that. Now wouldn't that be amazing? And I'm like, hey man, look at this. This is Creepypasta Network. This is like the best place to be for that sort of stuff. You just go in, you click, you go to the story section, you see a bunch of good stories like the ones I just read. So if you feel like getting off your lazy ass and clicking a stupid link, you'll be just fine. I really should insult you, I'm sorry. Just go to the link. Now. Please. Pretty please. Now.